Now that our um, pieces are dry, we're going to work on the edge of our piece because I think it just makes it look very interesting and finished off when you do the edge. So what I like to do is I like to put some fabric scraps and things just glued to the edge, not covering the entire edge as you can see because you've done this work to make this texture on the edge and you want that to be able to peek through here and there at the top and the bottom so as you can see. So you just really want your fabric strips and scraps just to go down the center. Now on this piece I overlaid some um, really old um, sequin trim that was kind of tarnished and it kind of made it pop a little bit. So you can really put whatever you want on the edge. So for this I just took some of the same materials that I used in the bird just to kind of tie it all together and I'm just going through and cutting a very thin strip of this just go down the edge you can cut around a curve and just keep on going through till you have a nice little strip that you can glue around the edge. It doesn't have to be a lot. See, I even like this because it has those holes in it and that's going to allow us to see more of the edge as well in our texture underneath. So again you go back to your E6000, your best friend in this project. And you don't want to put a ton, just a nice little a very thin amount here and there. You don't want a whole bunch sticking up through your trim piece so really kind of work to get it smoothed down pretty good. And then you just stick your trim on. And that just that little bit will hold this. And you can kind of push push around, push your edging around and play with it. You know, if you want it to stick up farther or not, that's up to you. You can kind of smoosh it around in that glue and make it kind of textured looking. You know, wrinkle it up here and there, crumple it, however you want to do your piece. So you get that side where you want it and then you just go around to your next side and keep gluing. It doesn't take much of this E6000. It really grabs very well and it dries really fast so it's nice. Well, I'd say it sets up pretty quick. Not necessarily dries but so you get, your, get your trim where you want it and just kind of move it around, smoosh it here and there. And if you've got some extra hanging off the bottom, you can go back and trim that up later. That is up to you. So I'm gonna, this is a little bit long. I want a little bit coming around the curve, but I don't want a big bulky spot there, so I'm just going to cut some of that off. So push that down. And I'm going to put a little bit over the top of that so I can glue my next piece down. Keep working at your edge until it's the way you think you like it. So this is entirely up to you how you want your project to be finished off. Honestly, when I go looking for um, fabric scraps, a lot of times I go to the thrift store because I want something that looks old or you know worn out. You can't always find those wonderful barn finds that 
give you a trunk full of grandma's old clothes, so I'm going to go looking at through the racks at the thrift store, because a lot of today's clothes have you know, the pretty little layers and things that look good in art, um, crochet on them and things like that. You can't always find a crochet doily at a flea market that's a good price, so I go looking through the racks at the thrift store, and if I find, I go through the, you know, my, the Goodwill store in my town, everything is um, organized by color instead of size, so they have whites in one area and blues in another. So the whites, I always go looking through, I usually find some really neat little things, things that aren't my size, but have the textures and the the styles that I like and then I'll bring them home, cut them up and dip them in tea or dip them in coffee and dye them so that I can use them in my projects. Sometimes I'll find blankets such as this is an old um, um, well it's a newer version of a chenille blanket and you know I tea dyed it and then it tears quite easily because it's cheap, thin reproduction. So it tore quite easily into strips. And I use that for a lot of different things. So you can really find a lot of fun fabrics and textures at the thrift store. So maybe that's an option. If you've had trouble finding the things that you want to use in your art, you can always make your own out of new things. So then once you're done, you can just go through and cut off any excess that's hanging off the back if you don't like it. I like a little bit of rough, but not a whole lot sticking off the back end. So, I could just trim a little bit. Trim, and then sometimes when I'm trimming, I actually pull the scissors away, and that helps to create a little bit more of a rough edge instead of just a straight line. It can grab a hold of a f hold of a piece and kind of pull it. And then you can always come back through and rough it up with your fingers as well to make it look a little more aged. And then you can put another little thin strip down the center like I, like I did with my um, sequin trim. And then, you know, you can layer it up as much as you want to. So there we've completed our um, our little uh, bird canvas board. Um, you've got your texture technique, how to make shapes with your um, tin, how to change things that you've already that you've already um, have to fit what your needs are for your piece. You've learned about E6000 and how wonderful it is. <laughs> um, really, I'm not affiliated with E6000. I just think it's a great product. But So, um, the last thing you need to know is that um, for the back, it's really easy to make a hanger for these, especially if you use a piece of wood. And if you use a canvas, you can just do this to the top edge. You can buy those little um, those little hangers that you just tap tap the little nails in if you want. Or I just used a few screws that were just laying around my studio, and then wrapped a piece of wire around them, and that makes a nice little quick hanger if you don't want to go out and buy extra hangers. So that is the finished product, and I hope you enjoyed this class. And let me know if you have any questions at all. I'm always available. And have a great day. One last thing I want to share with you is um, the possibility of using um, some of these textures and different ways you can use these ideas. Um, now, with our project, we cut uh, bird shapes out of tin. You could also make, you know, house shapes if you wanted to. You could make any kind of shapes you wanted to. It doesn't have to be a bird. Um, and if you're not comfortable cutting tin or if you don't have any tin, you can always use found objects to make your shapes, um, such as for these houses. This is a, um, a door plate. And, you know, this is just like just different found objects that I've you found metal detecting and at flea markets and yard sales. If there's a rusty bucket of metal sitting at a yard sale, I'm always drawn to it and digging through it. So, you know, this is a piece of an old... Um, 
an old fork and you know you can layer them up layer them up and on this one you can see that most of this piece is actually the fabric background so you just layer up your fabrics you can stitch them together you can glue them together and then you just glue your pieces of metal on top as an embellishment so there's a really a lot you can do with this technique it's you still got your texture technique that we used in the background and you know have fun with it um, just you can use wire and the wire I just stitched you know the wire pieces are just stitched through to the fabric layers um, so there's a lot you can do with just whatever you have on hand it doesn't have to be the specific things that I showed you in the video so put your thinking caps on and your creative pants and and just go after it and I'd love to see what you have made so get in contact with me and uh, thank you so much for taking this class